What's going on guys? It's Machanga back with another video. Today we're unboxing the brand new Microsoft Surface Go 2. I also own a Surface Pro 3 that I bought several years ago, so I'm expecting a few upgrades even though I know the Pro line is a bit beefier than the Go line. Once the outside plastic is removed and you lift up the box cover, the 10.5 inch Surface Go 2 is right there with the plastic cover that pretty much shows you where your ports and your front facing camera are located. You can see right away that you get your power button at the top as well as the volume controls, two microphones, and the five megapixel front facing camera that is Windows Hello compatible. On the right side, you have your Surface Connect power port, USB-C port, and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. In the box, you get a 24 watt charger that is magnetic, just like the previous version, but I do have to point out that this is a proprietary charger. So if you were expecting USB-C and to be able to use another laptop or phone cable, you don't get that here. Regardless of the price, you get a really nice premium feel to the Microsoft Surface devices. This is their entry level model, yet it still has that high quality lightweight magnesium alloy body. It looks and feels fantastic and it doesn't give you an impression that it's a budget laptop. Like I mentioned, you have all of your ports on the right, including a notch to raise the kickstand and then your power button and volume rock on the top of the device. Along with the Chrome Windows logo on the back, you have the 8 megapixel rear facing camera that does support 1080p video and another microphone. This isn't a thick, heavy device, so it definitely gets a check mark from me for portability. There are two notches on the back that allow you to open the built-in kickstand. This kickstand has a nice rigid hinge, full range of motion and adjustment, and honestly, feels like durability won't be an issue, but we'll revisit that in the full review because if you're planning to use this as your daily laptop for work or school, you'll be opening and closing that kickstand quite a bit. Underneath the kickstand, you have a micro SD card slot. So if you wanna expand the storage beyond the included 64 gigs, you have that option. Now let's take a look at the type cover. This is sold as an optional accessory, but in my opinion, it should be included in the box because this device is not a laptop without it. This this thing also costs a bit more than I feel it should, starting at $99. Microsoft could have thrown it in for $50 extra and made a lot of people, especially students, very happy. Don't get me wrong, it is a nice keyboard with a nice trackpad for the size, it's magnetic and backlit, plus you don't have to worry about charging it. I'm not completely sold on the felt material on this black model or even the Alcantara material on the other colors because I feel like it'll get dirty quicker and it'll be harder to clean, but it's marketed as stain resistant so we'll just have to see. We have the Surface Type Cover port at the top with some really strong magnets to connect this keyboard to the Surface Go. This specialized port is great because you don't ever have to worry about charging or forgetting to charge it. As far as the keyboard layout, you get a full row of function keys unlike what Apple did with the new Magic Keyboard. The trackpad is not the largest on the market, but it is glass and it feels clicky in almost all of the right places. You can only click it towards the bottom of the trackpad instead of the entire thing. Now this isn't a big deal to me, because I'm used to it, but you might want more functional space on such a small surface. Next up, we have the Surface Pen in black. It comes in a few different colors though. This is a nice pen that has been fine-tuned for the Surface devices. It has what's called a barrel button for added functionality, and it has a precision ink tip that's supposed to be even better than the original Surface Pen. And from my experience, that one was really amazing on my Surface Pro, so that's exciting news. At the top of the pen, there's the tail eraser that actually allows you to flip the pen around and erase on the display. But this eraser is also a button and we'll take a look at how that works in a moment. The pen is magnetic and can be attached to either side of the Surface Go 2 or whatever Surface device you're using. Again, we're working with strong magnets to ensure you don't lose your $99 pen while transporting or carrying your tablet. It's a simple and straightforward process to attach the Surface Go to the type cover. Even with the keyboard attached, it's a light compact package that allows you to use the Surface Go as a laptop or just as a tablet. There's an additional magnet that allows you to adjust the keyboard up a bit towards the screen for a more ergonomic typing position. Out of the box, you get Windows 10 Home in S mode. Now, S mode means that you have access to any of the apps that are available from the Microsoft Store. This modified version of Windows 10 is focused on performance and security, so 
you can only use Microsoft Edge for browsing. If you need other apps outside of the Microsoft Store or want to use a different browser, you have to permanently switch out of S mode to the normal Windows 10 Home. I'll leave a link below for the steps to get that done. During the initial setup process, I highly recommend actually reading the privacy settings and deselecting the ones you aren't interested in instead of just blindly clicking through like we sometimes do just to get it over with faster. You get Cortana just like on any other recent Windows machine, but personally, I don't use any voice assistance on any of my computers, so I normally just turn her off right at the beginning of setup. Even with using this Surface Go 2 in S mode, everything looks familiar if you've already used Windows 10. If you're considering this device for yourself or to give to someone else, you might want to keep S mode to assist with preserving battery life. Microsoft claims 10 hours of use, and I'll cover that in my full review. I do expect it to come close to that when we're not using any real taxing applications like Google Chrome, for example. The inclusion of Windows Hello is nice to have, and it's been fast in my testing so far, as long as you're not too far away from the camera. I'm not going in depth about the performance in this video because I consider myself to be a fair person, and I want to give this little machine a fair review by actually using it beyond taking it out of the box and turning it on. Under the hood, we have four gigs of RAM, an Intel Pentium Gold processor, and Intel onboard graphics. You can find specific details about the specs in the video description below. You do have the option to purchase a higher end model that has an 8th gen Core M3 processor and 8 gigs of RAM, but I wanted to test out the most budget friendly or affordable option since I'm a student and cost really matters. Once you start adding the accessories, the total cost of owning this type of hybrid machine adds up pretty quickly. So when you look at the $399 price tag, you need to decide if you really want or need the type cover or the surface pen. They are not cheap, but they do enhance the overall surface surface experience. Almost any device you purchase is responsive and snappy on day one, but what really matters to me is how it responds once you're in your workflow and you've spent some time adding your documents and downloads. I feel like the 64 gigs of eMMC storage on this machine will pose an almost immediate problem for a lot of people, so you really have to think hard about what you intend to use this machine for. Other than being compact, another nice option for this Surface is the optional Surface Pen. It's not buggy or prone to lag. It's super simple to pair with your Surface and the battery for the pen is already included and installed when you get it. I really like having a usable button on the top that can do more than just erase. You can click the button to open up the Microsoft whiteboard to quickly jot down some notes or whatever's on your mind. If you use the Microsoft Office Suite like I do, then you should be pretty happy with the added functionality of this Surface Pen and how much it can really contribute to your level of productivity. We already talked about how the pen is not a cheap add-on, but if you think you'll get your money's worth out of it and you're an artist or you just prefer to write instead of type, then it doesn't get any better than this on a Surface device. The writing experience is just great. It's smooth and it feels fairly natural on what Microsoft calls their Pixel Sense display. You'll notice the display picks the pen up before you even touch the screen. Using this tablet one-handed is a major relief coming from my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. I don't need to do a lot of arm curls to hold this one for an extended amount of time. The screen is nice, it's vibrant, it's bright. The resolution is 1920 by 1280 with a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, but I don't feel disappointed by it at all. I feel like the Microsoft Surface Go 2 would make a great companion device to my full-size laptop and my custom-built PC. Now, I'm speaking to you from my own perspective and initial impressions of this machine. I'm going to go into more detail in the full review about who I think should buy this and why you might want to consider something else depending on your budget. If you have specific questions you want answered, jump down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them in my upcoming video. As both a student and working professional, I can really appreciate the value in a compact Windows device like this one, and I'm looking forward to sharing even more of my thoughts with you. If you like this video and you want to see more, hit the like button. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to tap the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I post new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.